Hello and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video we're going to start looking at the theme decks from Odyssey. Uh, we're going to jump into it and start looking at Liftoff, which is a white and blue deck. So let's have a look at the deck list here. So we have 27 creatures, which is a lot. 6 instants, an artifact, 5 enchantments, 21 land, mana curve off to the side there. So let's start looking at some of these creatures. So, um, I would say the main theme of this, or you know, one of the main themes of the deck is the uh, mystic creatures. So this selection of white creatures that start off, uh, you know, kind of okay, and when you hit threshold, they almost all, yeah, they all get flying. Some of them get a uh, power bonus as well. So threshold is one of the gimmick. Uh, mechanics of Odyssey block. Uh, threshold is basically uh, as long as you have seven more cards in your graveyard you are considered to have Threshold. And uh, you know so it's obviously a mechanic that kind of lends itself on to longer games as you you know cast spells or you know creatures die your graveyard fills up. Um, but as we'll see in Odyssey block there are plenty of spells that um, help you to build up your graveyard quicker and hit Threshold faster. Uh, so these Mystic Creatures, so one of the rares of the deck is Mystic Crusader, which is a 3 mana 2-1 with protection from black and from red. And when you have Threshold, it has plus 1, plus 1 and flying. Uh, that's, I mean, that's okay. Uh, protection from black and red, um, I've said in a few videos before, I think those are the two uh, best colours to generally have protection from. Uh, just because it makes them, it makes a creature with, with them, you know, uh, basically immune to, to most removal effects. Uh, a single Mystic Penitent, um, who is a 1-1 one, one Vigilance, um, when you have Threshold, plus 1, plus 1 on Flying. Uh, Mystic Visionary is a 2-1, when you have Threshold, just gets Flying. Weird, he is the only one that doesn't get a plus 1, plus 1. Um, you know, it kind of makes him, you know, not as good. Uh, and then Mystic Zealot uh, is th uh, 4 mana for a 2-4, and when you have Threshold, has plus 1, plus 1 on Flying. So, yeah, once you hit Threshold and all these take to the sky, you've suddenly got quite a you know, respectable amount of creatures in the air. And, you know, if you draw these later in the game and you've always got Threshold, then, you know, they're quite well costed for what they do. Uh, so the other sort of half of the creatures in the deck are the Cephalids. So the Cephalids are a tribe that was introduced in Odyssey. Um, Odyssey, as we'll see, is kind of the block of weird tribes. Um, so we will have like Cephalids, we'll have Nomads, like Centaurs, Druids, like Dwarves, uh, Minions, like a lot of very weird tribes. I'm like getting, getting um, a highlight in the spotlight as such. So Cephalids, um, I'm actually going to go off on a bit of a tangent of Cephalids. So they are all, their creature type is all Cephalids. I don't understand this with um, <laughs> Magic Gathering design is um, so like you say you have Avens who are um, you know bird people but their creature type is always bird and the same with like Leonin their creature type is always cat with Cephalids who are clearly octopus people I don't know why they their creature type is not octopus I don't know why some creatures get their own unique creature type like Cephalid or Viashino, um, say and some you know, other anthropomorphic races get kind of lumped in like birds or cats or, or dogs or whatever. Anyway, that's my mild tangent. In, in an ideal world, I would like all of these to be um, oct octopuses, octopi. Anyway, uh, so we have two Cephalid Brokers. Uh, so it's four mana for a 2-2. Two, two. It taps. Uh, target player draws two cards, then discards two cards. That is pretty good. Double looting. Um, so it really helps you. You get to uh, draw two and you dump two, which lets you hit threshold faster. Um, I personally always use these in a... Um, uh, you know, when I used to play a lot more uh, in a blue-black discard deck, which had, you know, stuff like Megrim or like Liliana's Caress and stuff, because this is a, you know, a, a problem with the discard deck is uh, when your opponent runs out of cards in hand to discard, whereas this, you could always, you know, draw two and then they would discard two and that would trigger all the effects. But yeah, that's why I always used to like Cephalid Broker, but not, I think, for the... Um, uh, you know, the intent it was designed for, essentially. Um, and then Cephalid Looter is essentially a baby Cephalid Broker. Um, you know, it just does normal looting, draw, and then discard. But again, it can target a player. So, um, you know, if you really want to, you could target an opponent with this, um, you know, if they have only a few cards in hand and, you know, essentially make them discard. 
yeah, so it's an option. Uh, the other rare in the deck is Cephalid Retainer, uh, which is four mana for a 2-3. Two, uh, two blue tap type creature that flying. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's a flood effect. Uh, now we did the old blue enchantment flood. Uh, and then two Cephalid Scouts. Uh, it's two mana for a 1-1 one, one flyer. And two and a blue Sacrifice Land draw a card. That's a very expensive ability. Uh, you know, the three mana is a lot. And sacrificing a land is, like, not great either um but i suppose it gets you to threshold fast so you're sacrificing a land um yeah that's that's pretty weak i think um and then sort of filling out the rest of the creature are a bunch of kind of like defensive stally creatures so i guess what the um it's it's essentially like a blue white skies deck that you have to jump through some hoops for um yeah, you have all the mystic creatures. You essentially have to stall out until you hit threshold, and then you've got a load of flying evasive creatures, I guess. Uh, so Angelic Wall, you know, is a really good uh, blocker, just an awful flyer for two. Uh, Beloved Chaplain, uh, two mana for one with protection from creatures, which is pretty fun. I think this is the first time in Magic that that ability shows up, just protection from creatures. Obviously just makes him... Uh, super, super good blocker. He can block anything. Um, or um, he is unblockable himself. So, you know, if you found a way to increase his uh, power, like, pretty good, pretty good attacker as well, actually. Uh, Blessed Orator, four mana for one, four, gives all your other creatures uh, plus naught, plus one, which is okay. Again, more defensive. And Hallowed Healer, uh, two cards and white for a one, one. Tap, prevent the next two damage to the Bidoc Tuck, which will play this turn. Uh, but then if you have it, if you hit threshold, they it then gets tap, prevent the next four damage. Um, so this is kind of a thing as well in uh, Odyssey. It's kind of a design I like that when you hit yeah, a lot of kind of creatures or spells, like when you hit threshold, they get um, they get boosted up or they get new ability and stuff. I think it's I think it's pretty cool. And we will see a lot of that. It kind of makes me think of like a. Uh, sort of a precursor to things like, you know, like maybe like transform cards or like level up, you know, where they get progressively better. And um, yeah, I just think Threshold is quite an elegant way of tracking it, you know, just cards in Graveyard. Uh, and then a Nomad de Decoy, three three mana for a one, two, one white tap, tap target creature. And then Threshold, you can pay two white and tap two target creatures. Um, that Threshold really is very strong. <laughs> um, yeah, like uh, decoy type creatures like this, where they can tap down creatures for you know very small investment mana, are generally very good, um, because you know it gets big blockers out of the way, it stops big attackers, um, it just kind of you know stalls out the game, slows your opponent down. Um, so you know if you hit threshold and you can, and you can do it to two creatures, that's very very good. A single pilgrim of justice. Um, who's just a three mana for a one three protection from red? You can sacrifice him uh, to prevent all damage a red source would do. Um, it's all right. Um, uh, this is a mirrored pair, as these things usually are. There's a disciple of I think uh, no disciple pilgrim of virtue, which is the black version. Uh, the red version obviously a bit more useful, just because red obviously has uh, burn spells. Uh, and then we have two Avon Wind Readers. Uh, it's five mana for a 3-3 three, three flyer. Uh, you can pay one and a blue to make a player reveal the top card of their library, which is all right, I guess. Um, <laughs> just uh, It just seems like a weird creature to include, honestly. I mean, at the very least, it's just a big 3-3 three, three flyer. And then we have another, and then we have a puppeteer who's kind of like the nomad decoy. He can tap stuff, he can tap, uh, uh, he can tap down creatures, but he can always untap creatures. Um, if you wanted to, you know, attack with something and then untap it afterwards, so you've got to block next turn. It's always an option. Uh, we have two millikins, uh, who two mana artifact creature. It's zero one. Uh, tap, uh, mill yourself for one, and you add one colorless. Um, which is, I mean, again, it gets you to threshold faster. But, you know, as far as uh, mana dorks go, it's not wonderful. Uh, then we have three, and then moving on to enchantments, we have three Kurtar's Desire. So this is a cycle. Um, uh, basically, there was a bunch of, you know, uh, kind of key characters in Odyssey, and they all have a, a Desire enchantment, um, which uh, is usually cheap, and it gives uh, a fairly good effect. Um, and then when it hits threshold, it gets even better. So this Kurtar's Desire is essentially a cheap pacifism. Um, 
when you when you cast it initially, the enchanted creature can't attack, and then when you hit threshold, it can't block either. Um, it's good that the can't attack is, uh, you know, the the default effect because that's kind of what what you usually want to use pacifism for anyway, stopping attacks. Uh, so yeah, I mean it's fine. Uh, and there are two think tanks. Um, just two. Uh, so what's three mana? And uh, blue enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Look at the top card of your library. You can put it into your graveyard. Um, that's okay. Again, it lets you hit threshold faster. Uh, this is, I think, good late game. Maybe when like you don't want to draw lands, and then you can just like ditch lands or like you know other spells that you don't necessarily need. Um, I think it's okay. Uh, having two of them is is okay as well. Uh, then a bunch of just random spells here. So we have <coughs> a single embolden. Uh, which just prevents damage, um, has flashback. So flashback is, um, again, one of the other mechanics of Odyssey block. It, this is the first uh, block where it shows up. Um, I think it's quite a popular mechanic. People really like it. Obviously, people are more familiar with it uh, these days from like the various Innistrad blocks. But um, just because Odyssey was a very graveyard-focused um, block uh, and you had a lot of cards relying on kind of discard or milling yourself, uh, milling yourself to get you know to get threshold, um, it made sense that you know you could then play stuff from your from your graveyard. Uh, but embolden just prevents damage, and you know you can flashback so do it twice. Um, peak is just a single blue mana to look at a, a player's hand and then draw a card. Um, it's a kind of a weak effect. Um, not sure why. Not sure the point of having just one of these, but all right. <laughs> Uh, we have a single second thoughts, which is five mana to exile an attacking creature and draw a card. Uh, so the draw a card is nice, but it is a very is very expensive for that effect. Um, yeah, not much really to say about that. Uh, syncopate two of these. Uh, so this counters the spell unless the controller pays X, and if the spell is countered, the spell gets exiled and stuff. That uh, gets exiled instead of going to the graveyard, which definitely matters uh, in this block, just because you had you know spells with flashback. Um, so exiling it when it was cast, you know, would prevent um, a spell going to the graveyard where it could be flashed back later. And also, it you know, if it gets exiled, doesn't hit the graveyard and can potentially stop an opponent hitting threshold for their own effects that care about that kind of thing. So yeah, syncopate is pretty good. Uh, and then a single shelter. This just gives a creature control protection from the color choice to lend a turn, and you draw a card. Uh, two mana. That is quite. Uh, that's quite good. At two mana, uh, to give protection at instant speed and and draw a card, um, you know, giving protection from a color at instant speed is, um, uh, in some cases, in most cases, it's usually a counter spell, uh, because it you know stops like a removal spell or something like that, or you know it it kind of essentially say you know like this creature is unblockable for a turn or you know prevent all damage to it. Um, it's it's you know giving protection is always like a really, um, very flexible trick to do. Um. So, yeah, pretty good card. Again, it's a shame there's only, like, one of them. Uh, and then we just have, like, some some kind of uh, mana cards here, you know, just uh, just artifacts and some non-basic lands. Uh, so Sky Cloud Egg, uh, one mana. You can pay two, tap it, sacrifice it. You add white and blue to your mana pool and then draw a card. So it essentially just filters your mana. It's not giving you extra mana. You're just filtering it, but you get to draw a card. And again, you get sacrifice, so it hits as you hit threshold. Uh, which is going to be a thing I'm saying a lot in these in these deck reviews. And then we have a single abandoned outpost and a single seafloor debris. Um, so these are non-based lands. They come to play taps. They tap to add one ma uh, one coloured mana of a certain colour. And you can tap and sacrifice it to add a mana of any colour. Uh, again, this is these are like pretty good. Um, you know, when I initially saw these like you know way back when, um, I thought like oh they're not that great because you know you can only get one mana. You know, you only get like the uh, the mana of any colour once, and then you have to destroy it. But again, it's this thing of like. Yeah, you get the mana you need, and you sacrifice it. It lets you hit threshold quicker, which is, you know, so so key to a lot of these these decks, and you know, just making all the mystics, um, you know, making the mystics good. So it could have been. Um, I think it's an okay deck. Uh, it it feels a little, it feels a little unfocused, if I'm honest. Um, the the main trick it has is, you know, you you build up threshold. And then you attack with mystics, and the mystics are okay, uh, but I just feel like it could do a little more. 
so I mean the the main card I thought could go in here was Iridescent Angel, which is like this big flyer and has protection from all colors. And I just thought that'd be like a big fun rare to have in a deck like this. Um, probably have this instead of like the Cephalid. Uh, what was it Cephalid Detainer, the one that taps stuff down? Um, that probably would have been a better card. Um, but also just some other cards that help you like draw or discard or whatever. Uh, so Resilient Wanderer is a four mana. Uh, two, I think it's a two, 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 three, like a clever boy. I've covered up the power and toughness. It has first strike, and you can discard a card to give it protection from a color of your choice until end of turn, which is pretty good. Uh, I mean, I just talked about how good it is to give protection from a color at instant speed. Even Cloud Chaser is just a two, two flyer. When it comes in, you destroy an enchantment because there's not actually really much utility cards. Uh, that you got two syncopates, which are the counter spells, but apart from that, no, none of the usual kind of like enchantment destruction. You know, you just you usually associate with white. Um, a couple of ca uh, careful study, I think, is is good in this as well. Um, there is a deck later on I'll be looking at that uses these. Uh, but it's one blue mana sorcery. You draw two and discard two, which is really good because it essentially gives you three to your threshold count straight away. Uh, Chamber of Manipulation is a, um, oh god, it's an enchantment, or aura, I think it's a enchantment, again, I've covered up the type because I'm a clever boy, but it's a, uh, aura that goes on a land, and it has, a uh, tap, discard a card, you gain control of a creature until end of turn, so again, just something you could discard, get an effect, build up threshold, whatever. Um, and then Ether Burst, really disappointing that Ether Burst, because there's no bounce either, really. Um, so yeah, Ether Burst is this, uh, it's, it's part of a cycle of cards in Odyssey where they're all kind of based on Kindle from Tempest, where, you know, they, they, their effect gets stronger the more of them, uh, that are in Graveyard. So initially Ether Burst only lets you bounce one thing and then the next one you cast, it bounces two things and so on and so on. So it gets better. Um, so it just, I think would have been really good in a deck like this. Um, cause just cause, you know, like bounce is so... You know, it's so common in a kind of a white-blue deck like this just to have that kind of control. Because uh, all you really have is kind of like some slow creatures on the ground to store things out. You don't have the usual kind of uh, bounce effects. You have a few counter spells, but that's it, really. Um, yeah, so overall, uh, it's it's it feels... It doesn't feel great. You know, it feels, it feels a little boring. It feels a little unfocused. Um, and I don't know if it's because... You know, it's like the uh, a deck from the first set in a block, and it's trying to do a gimmick based on something like yeah, there's it, and there's not enough kind of uh, variety of cards to kind of do something more interesting. Um, the other thing as well, like all these mystics, uh, there was a rare mystic uh, that was green and white, um, which uh, you know was really really good, and you know it's not in this deck because it's green and white, um, and it just seems like a missed opportunity to uh, to have had it in. Um, yeah, this deck could have been green, white, or or even green, blue, white. Who knows? Uh, yeah. So, um, in summary, I don't. I this one's okay. It it seems like perfectly average, but it's not. It's nothing too exciting, in my opinion. So, so a bit of a disappointing start to look at the Odyssey decks. But we're gonna carry on. We'll look at some more. Um, in the meantime, let me know what you thought of this deck. Uh, did you have it? Did you play it? Did you make any changes to it? Uh, stick a comment below. But I'll be back next time to look at another Odyssey pre-constructed deck. Until then, thank you for watching and have a good day.